section fifteen of the morals volume one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cynthia Moyer. The Morals, Volume 1, by Plutarch. Translated by Several Hands. Corrected and revised by William W. Goodwin. The Apothames, or Remarkable Sayings, of Kings and Great Commanders. Part 1. Plutarch to trajan the emperor wisheth prosperity artaxerxes king of persia o caesar trajan greatest of princes esteemed it no less royal and bountiful kindly and cheerfully to accept small than to make great presents and when he was in a progress and a common country labourer having nothing else took up water with both his hands out of the river and presented it to him he smiled and received it pleasantly measuring the kindness not by the value of the gift but by the affection of the giver and lycurgus ordained in sparta very cheap sacrifices that they might always worship the gods readily and easily with such things as were at hand upon the same account when i bring a mean and slender present of the common first fruits of philosophy accept also i beseech you with my good affection these short memorials if they may contribute anything to the knowledge of the manners and dispositions of great men which are more apparent in their words than in their actions my former treatise contains the lives of the most eminent princes lawgivers and generals both romans and grecians but most of their actions admit a mixture of fortune whereas such speeches and answers as happened amidst their employments passions and events afford us as in a looking-glass a clear discovery of each particular temper and disposition accordingly seramnes the persian to such as wondered that he usually spoke like a wise man and yet was unsuccessful in his designs replied i myself am master of my words but the king and fortune have power over my actions in the former treatise speeches and actions are mingled together and require a reader that is at leisure but in this the speeches being as it were the seeds and the illustrations of those lives are placed by themselves and will not i think be tedious to you since they will give you in a few words a review of many memorable persons cyrus the Persians affect such as are hawk-nosed and think them most beautiful, because Cyrus, the most beloved of their kings, had a nose of that shape. Cyrus said that those that would not do good for themselves ought to be compelled to do good for others, and that nobody ought to govern unless he was better than those he governed when the persians were desirous to exchange their hills and rocks for a plain and soft country he would not suffer them saying that both the seeds of plants and the lives of men resemble the soil they inhabit darius darius the father of xerxes used to praise himself saying that he became even wiser in battles and dangers when he laid a tax upon his subjects he summoned his lieutenants and asked them whether the tax was burdensome or not when they told him it was moderate he commanded them to pay half as much as was at first demanded as he was opening a pomegranate 
one asked him what it was of which he would wish for a number equal to the seeds thereof he said of men like zopyrus who was a loyal person and his friend this zopyrus after he had maimed himself by cutting off his nose and ears beguiled the babylonians and being trusted by them he betrayed the city to darius who often said that he would not have had zopyrus maimed to gain a hundred babylons semiramis semiramis built a monument for herself with this inscription whatever king wants treasure if he open this tomb he may be satisfied darius therefore opening it found no treasure but another inscription of this import if thou wert not a wicked person and of insatiable covetousness thou wouldst not disturb the mansions of the dead xerxes arimenes came out of bactria as a rival for the kingdom with his brother xerxes the son of darius xerxes sent presents to him commanding those that brought them to say with these your brother xerxes now honors you and if he chance to be proclaimed king you shall be the next person to himself in the kingdom when xerxes was declared king arimenes immediately did him homage and placed the crown upon his head and xerxes gave him the next place to himself being offended with the babylonians who rebelled and having overcome them he forbade them weapons but commanded they should practice singing and playing on the flute keep brothel-houses and taverns and wear loose coats he refused to eat attic figs that were brought to be sold until he had conquered the country that produced them when he caught some grecian scouts in his camp he did them no harm but having allowed them to view his army as much as they pleased he let them go artaxerxes artaxerxes the son of xerxes surnamed longimanus or long hand because he had one hand longer than the other said it was more princely to add than to take away he first gave leave to those that hunted with him if they would and saw occasion to throw their darts before him he also first ordained that punishment for his nobles who had offended that they should be stripped and their garments scourged instead of their bodies and whereas their hair should have been plucked out that the same should be done to their turbans when satibarzanes his chamberlain petitioned him in an unjust matter and he understood he did it to gain thirty thousand pieces of money he ordered his treasurer to bring the said sum and gave them to him saying o satibarzanes take it for when i have given you this i shall not be poorer but i had been more unjust if i had granted your petition cyrus the younger cyrus the younger when he was exhorting the lacedaemonians to side with him in the war said that he had a stronger heart than his brother and could drink more wine unmixed than he and bear it better that his brother when he hunted could scarce sit his horse or when ill news arrived his throne he exhorted them to send him men promising he would give horses to footmen chariots to horsemen villages to those that had farms and those that possessed villages he would make lords of cities and that he would give them gold and silver not by tale but by weight artaxerxes mnemon artaxerxes the brother of cyrus the younger called mnemon 
did not only give very free and patient access to any that would speak with him but commanded the queen his wife to draw the curtains of her chariot that petitioners might have the same access to her also when a poor man presented him with a very fair and great apple by the sun said he tis my opinion if this person were entrusted with a small city he would make it great in his flight when his carriages were plundered and he was forced to eat dry figs and barley bread of how great pleasure said he have i hitherto lived ignorant parisatis parisatis the mother of cyrus and artaxerxes advised him that would discourse freely with the king to use words of fine linen orontes orontes the son-in-law of king artaxerxes falling into disgrace and being condemned said as arithmeticians count sometimes myriads on their fingers sometimes units only in like manner the favourites of kings sometimes can do everything with them sometimes little or nothing memnon memnon one of king darius's generals against alexander when a mercenary soldier excessively and impudently reviled alexander struck him with his spear adding i pay you to fight against alexander not to reproach him egyptian kings the egyptian kings according unto their law used to swear their judges that they should not obey the king when he commanded them to give an unjust sentence poltis poltis king of thrace in the trojan war being solicited both by the trojan and grecian ambassadors advised alexander to restore helen promising to give him two beautiful women for her teres teres the father of sitalces said when he was out of the army and had nothing to do he thought there was no difference between him and his grooms cotus cotus when one gave him a leopard gave him a lion for it he was naturally prone to anger and severely punished the miscarriages of his servants when a stranger brought him some earthen vessels thin and brittle but delicately shaped and admirably adorned with sculptures he requited the stranger for them and then brake them all in pieces lest said he my passion should provoke me to punish excessively those that break them idathyrsus idathyrsus king of scythia when darius invaded him solicited the ionian tyrants that they would assert their liberty by breaking down the bridge that was made over the danube which they refusing to do because they had sworn fealty to darius he called them good honest lazy slaves ateas ateas wrote to philip you reign over the macedonians men that have learned fighting and i over the scythians which can fight with hunger and thirst as he was rubbing his horse turning to the ambassadors of philip he asked whether philip did so or not he took prisoner ismenias an excellent piper and commanded him to play and when others admired him he swore it was more pleasant to hear a horse neigh scalurus scalurus on his deathbed being about to leave four score sons surviving offered a bundle of darts to each of them and bade them break them when all refused drawing out one by one he easily broke them thus teaching them that 
if they held together they would continue strong but if they fell out and were divided they would become weak galo galo the tyrant after he had overcome the carthaginians at himera made peace with them and among other articles compelled them to subscribe this that they should no more sacrifice their children to saturn he often marched the syracusans out to plant their fields as if it had been to war that the country might be improved by husbandry and they might not be corrupted by idleness when he demanded a sum of money of the citizens and thereupon a tumult was raised he told them he would but borrow it and after the war was ended he restored it to them again at a feast when a harp was offered and others one after another tuned it and played upon it he sent for his horse and with an easy agility leaped upon him hiero hiero who succeeded galo in the tyranny said he was not disturbed by any that freely spoke against him he judged that those that revealed a secret did an injury to those to whom they revealed it for we hate not only those who tell but them also that hear what we would not have disclosed one upbraided him with his stinking breath and he blamed his wife that never told him of it but she said i thought all men smelt so to xenophanes the colophonian who said he had much ado to maintain two servants he replied but homer whom you disparage maintains above ten thousand although he is dead he fined epicarmus the comedian for speaking unseemly when his wife was by dionysius dionysius the elder when the public orators cast lots to know in what order they should speak drew as his lot the letter m and when one said to him morologes you will make a foolish speech o dionysius you are mistaken said he monarcheso i shall be a monarch and as soon as his speech was ended the syracusans chose him general in the beginning of his tyranny the citizens rebelled and besieged him and his friends advised him to resign the government rather than to be taken and slain by them but he seeing a cook butcher an ox and the ox immediately fall down dead said to his friends is it not a hateful thing that for fear of so short a death we should resign so great a government when his son whom he intended to make his successor in the government had been detected in debauching a freeman's wife he asked him in anger when did you ever know me guilty of such a crime but you sir replied the son had not a tyrant for your father nor will you said he have a tyrant for your son unless you mend your manners and another time going into his son's house and seeing there abundance of silver and gold plate he cried out thou art not capable of being a tyrant who hast made never a friend with all the plate i have given thee when he exacted money of the syracusans and they lamenting and beseeching him pretended they had none he still exacted more twice or thrice renewing his demands until he heard them laugh and jeer at him as they went to and fro in the market-place and then he gave over now said he since they contemn me it is a sign they have nothing left when his mother being ancient 
requested him to find a husband for her. I can, said he, overpower the laws of the city, but I cannot force the laws of nature. Although he punished other malefactors severely, he favored such as stole clothes, that the Syracusans might forbear feasting and drunken clubs. A certain person told him privately he could show him a way how he might know beforehand such as conspired against him. Let us know, said he, going aside. Give me, said the person, a talent, that everybody may believe that I have taught you the signs and tokens of plotters. And he gave it him, pretending he had learned them, much admiring the subtlety of the man. Being asked whether he was at leisure, he replied, God forbid that it should ever befall me. Hearing that two young men very much reviled him and his tyranny in their cups, he invited both of them to supper, and perceiving that one of them prattled freely and foolishly, but the other drank warily and sparing, he dismissed the first as a drunken fellow whose treason lay no deeper than his wine, and put the other to death as a disaffected and resolved traitor. Some blaming him for rewarding and preferring a wicked man, and one hated by the citizens. I would have, said he, somebody hated more than myself. When he gave presents to the ambassadors of Corinth, and they refused them because their law forbade them to receive gifts from a prince to whom they were sent in embassy. He said they did very ill to destroy the only advantage of tyranny, and to declare that it was dangerous to receive a kindness from a tyrant. Hearing that a citizen had buried a quantity of gold in his house, he sent for it and when the party removed to another city and bought a farm with part of his treasure which he had concealed dionysius sent for him and bade him take back the rest since he had now begun to use his money and was no longer making a useful thing useless dionysius the younger said that he maintained many sophists not that he admired them but that he might be admired for their sake. When Polyxenus the logician told him he had baffled him, Yes, said he, in words, but I have caught you in deeds, for you, leaving your own fortune, attend me and mine. When he was deposed from his government, and one asked him what he got by Plato and philosophy, he answered, that I may bear so great a change of fortune patiently. Being asked how it came to pass that his father, a private and poor man, obtained the government of Syracuse, and he, already possessed of it, and the son of a tyrant, lost it. My father, said he, entered upon affairs when the democracy was hated, but I, when tyranny was become odious. To another that asked him the same question, he replied, My father bequeathed to me his government, but not his fortune. Agathocles was the son of a potter. When he became lord and was proclaimed king of Sicily, he was wont to place earthen and golden vessels together, and show them to young men, telling them, those I made first, but now I make these by my valor and industry. As he was besieging a city, some from the walls reviling him, saying, Do you hear, Potter, where will you have money to pay your soldiers? He gently answered, I'll tell you if I take this city. And having taken it by storm, he sold the prisoners, telling them, if you reproach me again, I will complain to your masters. 
some inhabitants of ithaca complained of his mariners that making a descent on the island they had taken away some cattle but your king said he came to sicily and did not only take away sheep but put out the shepherd's eyes and went his way dion dion that deposed dionysius from the tyranny when he heard callippus whom of all his friends and attendants he trusted most conspired against him refused to question him for it saying it is better for him to die than to live who must be weary not only of his enemies but of his friends too archelaus archelaus when one of his companions and none of the best begged a golden cup of him bade the boy give it euripides and when the man wondered at him you said he are worthy to ask but he is worthy to receive it without asking a prating barber asked him how he would be trimmed he answered in silence when Euripides at a banquet embraced fair Agatho and kissed him, although he was no longer beardless, he said, turning to his friends, Do not wonder at it, for the beauty of such as are handsome lasts after autumn. Timotheus the harper, receiving of him a reward less than his expectation, twitted him for it not obscurely and once singing the short verse of the chorus you commend earth-born silver directed it to him and archelaus answered him again singing but you beg it when one sprinkled water upon him and his friends would have had him punish the man you are mistaken said he he did not sprinkle me but some other person whom he took me to be philip theophrastus tells us that philip the father of alexander was not only greater in his port and success but also freer from luxury than other kings of his time he said the athenians were happy if they could find every year ten fit to be chosen generals since in many years he could find but one fit to be a general and that was parmenio when he had news brought him of diverse and eminent successes in one day o oh, fortune said he for all these so great kindnesses do me some small mischief after he had conquered greece some advised him to place garrisons in the cities no said he i had rather be called merciful a great while than lord a little while his friends advised him to banish a railer from his court i will not do it said he lest he should go about and rail in many places smicythus accused nicanor for one that commonly spoke evil of king philip and his friends advised him to send for him and punish him truly said he nicanor is not the worst of the macedonians we ought therefore to consider whether we have given him any cause or not when he understood therefore that nicanor being slighted by the king was much afflicted with poverty he ordered a boon should be given him and when smicythus reported that nicanor was continually abounding in the king's praises you see then said he that whether we will be well or ill spoken of is in our own power he said he was beholden to the athenian orators who by reproaching him made him better both in speech and behavior for i will endeavor said he both by my words and actions to prove them liars 
such athenians as he took prisoners in the fight at chironea he dismissed without ransom when they also demanded their garments and quilts and on that account accused the macedonians philip laughed and said do ye not think these athenians imagine we beat them at cockle in a fight he broke his collar-bone and the surgeon that had him in cure requested him daily for his reward take what you will said he for you have the key there were two brothers called both and either perceiving either was a good understanding busy fellow and both a silly fellow and good for little he said either is both and both is neither to some that advised him to deal severely with the athenians he said you talk absurdly who would persuade a man that suffers all things for the sake of glory to overthrow the theatre of glory being arbitrator betwixt two wicked persons he commanded one to fly out of macedonia and the other to pursue him being about to pitch his camp in a likely place and hearing there was no hay to be had for the cattle what a life said he is ours since we must live according to the convenience of asses designing to take a strong fort which the scouts told him was exceeding difficult and impregnable he asked whether it was so difficult that an ass could not come at it laden with gold lasthenes the olynthian and his friends being aggrieved and complaining that some of philip's retinue called them traitors these macedonians said he are a rude and clownish people that call a spade a spade he exhorted his son to behave himself courteously toward the macedonians and to acquire influence with the people while he could be affable and gracious during the reign of another he advised him also to make friends of men of interest in the cities both good and bad that afterwards he might make use of these and suppress those to philo the theban who had been his host and given him entertainment while he remained an hostage at thebes and afterwards refused to accept any present from him he said do not take from me the title of invincible by making me inferior to you in kindness and bounty having taken many prisoners he was selling them sitting in an unseemly posture with his tunic tucked up when one of the captives to be sold cried out spare me philip for our fathers were friends when philip asked him prithee how or from whence let me come nearer said he and i'll tell you when he was come up to him he said let down your cloak a little lower for you sit indecently whereupon said philip let him go in truth he wisheth me well and is my friend though i did not know him being invited to supper he carried many he took up by the way along with him and perceiving his host troubled for his provision was not sufficient he sent to each of his friends and bade them reserve a place for the cake they believing and expecting it ate little and so the supper was enough for all it appeared he grieved much at the death of hipparchus the euboean for when somebody said it was time for him to die for himself said he but he died too soon for me preventing me by his death from returning him the kindness his friendship deserved 
hearing that alexander blamed him for having children by several women therefore saith he to him since you have many rivals with you for the kingdom be just and honourable that you may not receive the kingdom as my gift but by your own merit he charged him to be observant of aristotle and study philosophy that you may not said he do many things which i now repent of doing he made one of antipater's recommendation a judge and perceiving afterwards that his hair and beard were coloured he removed him saying i could not think one that was faithless in his hair could be trusty in his deeds as he sate judge in the cause of one Machaetus, he fell asleep and for want of minding his arguments gave judgment against him and when being enraged he cried out i appeal to whom said he wilt thou appeal to you yourself o king said he when you are awake to hear me with attention then philip rousing and coming to himself and perceiving machaetus was injured although he did not reverse the sentence he paid the fine himself when harpalus in behalf of crates his kinsman and intimate friend who was charged with disgraceful crimes begged that crates might pay the fine and so cause the action to be withdrawn and avoid public disgrace it is better said he that he should be reproached upon his own account than we for him his friends being enraged because the peloponnesians to whom he had shown favour hissed at him in the olympic games what then said he would they do if we should abuse them awaking after he had overslept himself in the army i slept said he securely for antipater watched another time being asleep in the daytime while the grecians fretting with impatience thronged at the gates do not wonder said parmenio to them if philip be now asleep for while you slept he was awake when he corrected a musician at a banquet and discoursed with him concerning notes and instruments the musician replied far be that dishonour from your majesty that you should understand these things better than i do while he was at variance with his wife olympia and his son demaratus the corinthian came to him and philip asked him how the grecians held together demaratus replied you had need to inquire how the grecians agree who agree so well with your nearest relations whereupon he let fall his anger and was reconciled to them a poor old woman petitioned and dunned him often to hear her cause and he answered i am not at leisure the old woman bawled out do not reign then he admired the speech and immediately heard her and others End of section 15